the Canon L3, made in Japan between 1957 and 1958. During that one year production run, 130,000 models were made. And I've got one of them. Now I picked this up from a local auction site for the princely sum of $187, body only. And the body looks to be in pretty good condition actually, we'll, we'll check it out shortly. Now obviously, because it came body only, I needed a lens for it. So I went shopping. The first thing I spotted was this, a Canon 50mm 1.8 lens. Small but perfectly formed, absolutely stunning little lens. It has got a bit of haze in there, a few dust spots in there. I picked this up for $80, so uh, that was a bit of a steal actually, I thought. I also spotted this on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> this is a Lights Elmar 5cm 3.5 lens. It's a collapsible lens and it's absolutely tiny. It came with an M mount adapter. It took a little bit of getting off to be honest, but it's, it's off and we don't need that now. That just sits into the camera like so. And that is as unobtrusive as a lens can get. And then when you want to use the lens, you pop it out, you turn it to lock it in place, then you're good to go. That just absolutely looks the part, in my humble opinion. I can't wait to give that a go. Now, I paid $200 for this lens. Anything with Leica on it or lights on it is going to be expensive. But I thought that was quite reasonable, to be fair. Then to collapse the lens, you just turn it back and then pop it down. And that just sits down there nicely. So first things first, let's look around the camera. Starting on the top plate, on the left hand side, we have the rewind knob. To access the rewind knob, you've got to pull down on this lever here. And the rewind knob just pops up, ready to be rotated. I think that's quite a funky little feature. Next to that, we have the frame selector. To use this, you've got a dial on the back there in the viewfinder, and you just turn this to 50 millimeter, 35 millimeter, or the rangefinder for longer lenses. But because I've got a couple of 50 mil lenses, we'll just leave it set on 50 millimeter. Now, one thing I've found out since I've been using the camera is that when I said that the RF was for longer lenses, it kind of is. But by what I understand, or what I'm finding out, you put it onto RF and it magnifies the image in the viewfinder. So I've just been trying it a little bit with a 50 millimeter and man, it just, it fills up the screen. Instead of a small rangefinder patch in the middle of the screen, you've got the full screen, which becomes a rangefinder patch and it's just making focusing so much easier. That's a good learning point for future reference. Next, you've got a cold shoe, which I'm not bothered about. I'm not gonna use flash with this camera, so forget about all that. Shutter speed dial selector. Now this camera goes from uh, one second to one five hundredth of a second and it has got a bulb mode as well. You rotate that round until you uh, get your desired shutter speed. Now, if you do want to go slower, you turn this round until you get the orange 30 stroke one symbol on there. And then you go to the front of the camera and this one is your slow shutter speed dial selector. And you just kind of turn that round to whatever speed you want it. That'll go from one second there and that will take it up to one thirtieth of a second. So that's, that's how you operate that anyway. This is your shutter release button. Cock the shutter, advance the lever, listen to this listen to this does that not sound beautiful sounds a little bit grindy winding on but the actual release beautiful sound now on the outer collar of the shutter release button you've got this little dial that you rotate and that will allow you to disengage the film ready for rewinding but I'll show you that when it comes to it You've got a little red film advance indicator spot in there. So when you advance the film, you see that rotating round, you know that the film is engaged okay. On the shutter release dial, you've got this little reminder to set your ISO. Now that actually does nothing apart from give you a reminder of what speed film you've got in there. This here is your film counter window. Now for this, you've got to set that manually. So when you put a new film in, there's a little dial on the front there and you just rotate that round until you get to zero. So that will be there, that is set now and then you advance and then it starts counting away. But you've got to remember to set that. We've got the dial, obviously, I've just shown you. We've got the rangefinder window there. We've got the viewing window there and a couple of lug straps. That's all there is to show you there. You turn this key on the bottom plate, pull down this little tab and that pops open your door. The cloth curtains look to be in pretty good condition. Everything seems to be moving and advancing as it should and firing as it should. You've got a standard tripod mount there. And that's it, that's as simple as the camera gets. Let's just show you a little bit about this lens. Like a thread mount or LTM or M39 screw mount. Now this is so heavy, I mean look at the, look at the difference in size, they're both 50 millimeters. This obviously is 1.8, this is 3.5. But the difference, the difference in weight as well, oh, incredible. So let's just show you what the Canon L3 looks like with the Canon 50 mil 
1.8 on there. I think you'll agree, <laughs> that looks beautiful. Let's think about putting some film in this camera. We're going to put in a roll of Rolleye RPX 100. Black and white film, turn the back door release key, pop this tab, open the door. Lift up the film locking mechanism there, drop the film in, pop down the locking pin. You need to find a slot to slot in the film. Wind on, that's caught straight away, that's beautiful. Do another wind on, make sure the film is between the two guide rails there. Oh, that's winding on. A treat. Close the back door, turn the locking key, wind it one more time, burn one more, then we need to set the counter to zero. Okay so now we are all set. We're gonna get a couple of photographs of the kids just in their little environment here. So I'm gonna try out both lenses and see which one I prefer. So we'll start off with the Canon 50mm 1.8 lens. So I'll get a series of shots with this, maybe half a roll with this, and then we'll do half a roll with the Lights Elmar 5cm, which is 50mm, 3.5. And we'll just see which ones I prefer. And of course, to record the light, we're going to use the Sekonic Flashmate L308B. We'll just set it at box speed, ISO 100. My maximum shot speed, of course, is 500 for the second. So f5.6 at the moment looks pretty good. May even go to f11, who knows. So the first shot's in the garden is going to be f8, one five hundredth of a second. Let's wind on and take the first shot with a Canon L3. Don't know if that's focused right. Let's have a look, where is she? Beautiful. Thanks, baby girl. Let's get one of little carbon now. Let's try F4, one five hundredth. Just turn him away from the light. Let's try and find F4, there we go. Good boy. Clever boy, clever boy. You set the film counter to zero, and instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, it counts backwards. So it, uh, it goes from zero to 36, 35, 34, 33. It counts down instead of counting up, if you get what I mean. One thing I think would be quite handy, a shutter lock button, but I don't think it's got one. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not got a shutter lock. I could be wrong, I could be wrong. What's that? Oh, no, oh, that's a shutter trip. All right, so that was, I'm just wasted one there. Hey, you stuck, mister. It's going to need tears. When do I run? When do I run? Oh. <laughs> I've used around 16, 17 shots. So I'm going to put on the other lens just to, uh, just to shake things up a bit and see which lens I prefer using and which, in my opinion, gives the nicer results. Five centimeter lights Elmar, like so. I'm quite looking forward to using this lens. It does look the part, it really does. So to extend, pull it out, twist it to lock it in place. I've enjoyed using the Canon, that's for sure. But this one, this is the one that I'm really looking forward to. Go Ben, go boy. Any other subject, landscapes, static subjects where I can sort of, uh, where I can set my focus, get a nice portrait, easy, easy. When the little buggers are like this and they're moving about all over the place and they won't look at the camera when you want them to look at the camera and they look away and then they jump into the shade and out of the shade, Oh man, it ain't easy, but I'm enjoying it. Based on nothing more than pure feel, maybe the Elmar is a little bit easier to use. Maybe, I don't know. Is this? Oh, another frame. Yeah, I'm just wasting these, to be honest. And then the light goes again a little bit, so I'm just dropping it down a stop. 250 for F8. I don't think it's going too badly. Hey, Cobbs, there's a good boy. There's a good boy, where is he? Man. And then he looks, but I'm not ready. Good boy! Clever boy! Clever man! All right, the sun's back out again, so 500th F8. I think what's throwing me a little bit with the, the focusing is in the rangefinder patch, you've got an image and a ghost image, and you bring them together with a focusing tab there, and once they're aligned, that's when you know you've got focus. Horizontal alignment looks perfect, the vertical alignment is slightly off. So even though it's coming together and I know I've got focus, it's slightly off on the vertical, which won't make any difference at all, I hope. But it's just throwing me a little bit when I'm trying to get a focus. Go Ben, and then he's bugging off again. Gobby, this way, mister. <sighs> this ain't easy. All I want is 36 frames. 
get this film processed and I'm laughing. But I'll try and get a couple of decent shots out of it. Finally, after a mission, the film's finished. It's showing on the counter that I've got three frames left, but it's not winding on and it's not firing. So that tells me it's the end of the roll. So to rewind it, when it says A, you turn that collar to the opposite direction of the A and then you lift the rewind knob and presumably you start rewinding and when you're rewinding actually the red spot in the window there you can see that turning well, this is quite exciting actually just to see if I've got anything exposed on this roll of film <laughs> and my young fella down there I think he's uh, baking something for me bless him and it's not chocolate cake some sort of mud cake I would imagine come on whoa mate okay now the rewind knob has gone really loose really slack so that tells me that the film is at an end so I'll press that down turn back the disengage mechanism close the lens up cool that calls that and now oh mate and then we'll open the back door and hopefully we see a film there oh, ho, ho. look at that chief well, I'll tell you what, what we need to do is just lift the locking pin up and then the film should just drop out there we go beautiful lock that back up shut the key put the camera folded away into the bag now it's time to process this film straight away look there we've got an image quite a lot of images on there that's a blank image there which I knew what I did there I uh, set the disengage sequence on it. I'll tell you what, these look good. These look really well. Hey, beautiful. Plain. These look really well exposed. How sharp they are is another thing. They look pretty sharp though, mate, I tell you. And it's saying here that I've got 36 frames, so the counter was off. That's no big deal. All right, let's get these drained. What do you think of that, babes? Looks like we... I know, darling. Lane. Looks like we might have a result out of that. You know, sit, sit down with Grandad. I am absolutely blown away by the quality of the photographs that have come out of the camera. These are all straight negative scans, all unedited. These are the ones that I picked out as winners in my book. There's an even spread between the Canon 50mm lens and the Lights Elmar 5cm lens. All I've done with these photographs is done a slight edit on them, increase the blacks, increase the contrast really. They're all acceptably sharp, acceptably in focus. I'm just absolutely amazed by that. I've got to be honest, it's far too soon with these two lenses to pick a winner because I'm looking at the photographs and I, can't, I really can't see much difference between the two lenses. The Canon 51.8 is fantastic, can't fault it, love it to bits, beautiful lens. Oops, it was. I've got to say, this little Elmar, my God, honestly, I mean, look at that. That is just it's stunning and the photographs that have come out of it on the back end of the roll there got some absolute cracking shots I don't know why but the focusing seemed to be a lot easier a lot quicker a lot snappier with the Elmar for the time being I'm going to stick with the Elmar I'm going to put the Canon 50 1.8 away in the cupboard for another day I'm going to continue to use this and put it through its paces because I, <laughs> I'm in love with it and what can I say about the experience of shooting the Canon L3 well I can tell you this 
I absolutely love this camera. It's built to last, clearly, been a 1957 camera. I mean, it's still going, still going strong. You buy these old cameras and you're always a little bit concerned thinking, is it gonna work? Is it gonna have light leaks? Is something gonna go ping and just, just break? Not a bit of it. This camera is a winner, it really is. I love it to bits. Everything's just right where it should be. <laughs> what can I say? What can go wrong with this camera, really? You know, there's no batteries because there's no internal light meter. Uh, there's no autofocus, there's no auto exposure, there's no aperture priority, there's no nothing, no nothing. Everything is 100% everything is manual. So whatever you set, you've got to set it manually. And it's all just part of the challenge to get some acceptable photographs out of something like this. And I think already in the photographs that I've just shot with this camera, it's making me want to put another roll for this camera as soon as possible. But I've got no film, I've got no film, so I've just ordered a couple of rolls. They should be in a couple of days. As soon as it arrives, <laughs> we're loading, we're shooting because this camera is a keeper, without a shadow of a doubt. Now in the next episode, I've done something a little bit stupid. An impulse buy. Wasn't expensive, it was quite cheap actually in the big scheme of things. But what can I say, I saw a video on YouTube and I thought, shit, never tried that before, I'm going to try it. This will be the next episode. I've not even taken it out of the box, so uh, fingers crossed, it's in working order. If not, <laughs> scratch this idea. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and until next time, when we try out this, this thing, <laughs> uh, I'll see you on the next episode.